Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome to another episode of World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today Kung Fu Barbie in the British Tier 10 Destroyer, HMS Daring, a very capable ship, I'm sure you'll all agree, is going to be having an unusual Tier 10 ranked battle here in Domination Mode on the Trap Map. This battle really does have it all. Utterly boneheaded enemies, utterly boneheaded teammates, and some surprisingly smart and sophisticated decisions on both teams as well. First, let's just take a quick look at the team lineups. No carriers, no submarines, and only one destroyer on each team. There are three cap circles, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. So Kung Fu Barbie would have to be extraordinarily unlucky to run into the enemy destroyer whichever cap he decides to go for. He's got a one in three chance of going for the same cap circle as the Marceau on the enemy team. But it is a Marceau, and he's in the daring, so even in the unlikely eventuality that they both end up going for the same cap circle at the start of the map, by accident, the Marceau is probably the one who should be worried, because he will get outspotted by the daring. In fact, the only thing that Kung Fu Barbie really needs to pay attention to is the location of the enemy radar cruiser, the Des Moines. So he's going to want to stay more than 10 kilometers away from that when and if he gets spotted. And based on his RPF indicator, around the middle of the screen there, he's heading for Alpha, and it looks like the enemy Marceau, because we're assuming the Marceau is going to be the closest ship to him, is probably heading for Bravo. So that's good news. Except Trap isn't a very big map, and Alpha and Bravo are actually not that far apart. Still, he's going to pay attention, keep an eye on it, and see what happens. And he is being followed by the Des Moines. So he will have radar support in the event that that Marceau becomes a problem. So, enemy Preussen spotted, and the RPF indicator did just flip solidly in the direction of Bravo, which probably indicates that the Marceau is now the closest enemy ship. Enemy Montana appears to be skirting wide around the flank. Barbie pops his hydro just in case there are any torpedoes on the way. There's the Des Moines. He's going to have to make sure he stays more than 10 kilometers away from him. Somebody is flipping Bravo, and it is the Marceau. Now, pay attention to the timestamps here. 1740 when he launches these torpedoes at the Marceau. He immediately slows and pops his smoke in order to get some guns on him. And the Marceau is not doing anything particularly unusual for a Marceau. He's relying on his speed to avoid the fire from the Des Moines. The Des Moines, however, is basically tunnel visioning on that Marceau so hard that he is broadsiding the entire enemy team in order to get shots out. And he's missing with most of them, and now he's dead. So the Marceau is thinking, haha, got away with it, enemy radar crews are dead. Well, yes and no. I mean, yeah, the Des Moines is dead because he was an idiot, but the Marceau has not gotten away with it because he has been sailing the same course and speed for the last minute. Which means those torpedoes... <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, really. Wow, <laughs> Marceau, hang your head in shame. <laughs> it's not that unusual. I mean, the Marceau is a very, very fast destroyer, and Marceau captains do tend to just rely on their speed to dodge shell fire. But, you know, if you expect there to be torpedoes, and he clearly did because he saw Kung Fu Barbie's smoke screen and was blind firing into it, change your course and speed. Otherwise, well, if Randy Preussen appears to be, uh, yeah, he's getting heavily focused, isn't he? And the Montana on the flank is probably going to be the biggest problem for him. So, Kung Fu Barbie, because British smoke, short duration, but quick cooldown. This smoke is not for Kung Fu Barbie, it's for the Preussen. It's not often you see destroyers doing this for random teammates. And it isn't as effective as it used to be because of the whole smoke firing penalty thing. And I'm pretty sure that the Preussen has fired recently, and so he's not actually able to take advantage of the smoke screen. And it's the Montana on the flank who gets him right as he's turning around to point his nose towards those guys up to the north. So, 
The Timor, two ships down, one battleship, one heavy cruiser. Although they do have one cash, and Kung Fu Barbie's in the process of flipping a second, although he's starting to get a bit frustrated with his teammates dropping like flies around him. He's telling the friendly Montana to get the hell back and stop sailing into the same crossfire that just killed the Preussen, and to his credit, the Montana sees it coming, and he's not going to make the same mistake. From here, of course, he's able to lob shells over the island onto the enemy Preussen, who is attracting the majority of the team's focus fire at the moment, after the Des Moines, who was attracting the majority of the team's focus fire, ducked into cover behind the island over there to the right. And of course he's not spotted because nobody has direct line of fire on him. He's managed to set a fire there. However, that Des Moines is within 10 kilometres. We can't see him, but he's just on the other side of the island over there to the right. And he's probably getting yelled at by the captain of the Preussen, Radar, now. And sure enough, that's exactly what the Des Moines does. Now, this isn't terrible because the Des Moines doesn't have line of fire, but the Preussen secondaries do, as do the Montana's main guns. And the Montana is paying attention. Enemy Montana, that is, obviously. And there it is. Fortunately, he misses. So Kung Fu Barbie's thinking, well, if the Montana's missed, I've got at least 30 seconds, but the Preussen secondaries could be a problem. So he gets ready to boogie on out of there. Probably also hoping that the uh, Des Moines radar expires soon. Any second now would be nice before that Montana gets a second salvo off and adjusts his aim. He's desperately trying to nail that Preussen because the team are 100 points ahead and they have all three of the caps thanks to the Mecklenburg that took Charlie. The Montana gets to fire again but again misses and the Des Moines radar expires. He was not able to secure the kill on the Preussen however. Here's the thing, they are only one kill down. They have three of the caps, which means they have a comfortable point lead. And while it's likely that they're not going to be able to hold on to Charlie, thanks to that Ohio coming around the corner of the islands up to the north, if you have a look at the minimap, there he is, he's just popped up and he's shooting and chasing after the Mecklenburg. But they're still gonna have two caps. So right now it's up to the enemy team to make the mistakes. The enemy team have to attack, they have to get more kills, they have to flip the cap circles in order to win this match. So this is the moment where Kung Fu Bobby's team should be falling back to defensive positions and getting ready to catch the enemy team in the open. Finish off the low health Des Moines, finish off the low health Preussen. Wait for them to make the mistakes and take advantage of it. So why is the Yoshino attacking? Why is he sailing out from behind cover with 6,000 health remaining in order to attack an Ohio? Apparently he's just sick of living. And it's the Montana over there who actually gets the kill in the crossfire. So the Yoshino just served himself up to the enemy team on a silver plate. The Mecklenburg is trying to break contact, disengage, buy himself some time to get a heal off. The Mecklenburg knows this, but the enemy team know that just as well. They know they cannot afford to let him do that, or it's going to make life so much harder for them, flipping those caps and taking the lead. And so they focused him down savagely. And that just leaves Kung Fu Barbie and the Montana against five enemies. They still have a 100 point lead, but they won't have that for long because the enemy team are flipping Charlie, then they'll steam straight into Bravo and there's just not enough friendly ships left alive to defend against them. And then they'll have two caps, the points, and they'll be fighting with a 5-2 to two advantage. So, Kung Fu Barbie straps on his man pants and he goes for it. And attacking the enemy Montana is absolutely the right thing to do for a whole bunch of reasons. But note how he holds his torpedoes until he is absolutely sure they're all going to hit because it's going to take almost all of those torpedoes it took eight of them to put the montana down but because he didn't fire his guns he's undetected the second the montana dies and that enemy montana was by far the single biggest threat to the friendly montana because it had a crossfire on him the friendly montana nukes the des moines Kung Fu Barbie was going for the Des Moines as well because the radar cruiser was obviously the biggest threat to Kung Fu Barbie's survival. If things start getting a bit too hot here, he can always use his smoke. Remember, it may have a short duration, but he has a lot of charges and it's on a very short cooldown. And this is absolutely a good time to use it, and of course he is. 
because he doesn't want to get ripped apart by the price and secondaries and he needs to help the Montana reduce that Ohio. Starting off with a high explosive. He's probably going to wait until he sets a fire and then switch to the armor piercing because the Daring's armor piercing is surprisingly good against battleship superstructure and sure enough, that is exactly what he's done. Nice to see. Daring really can be a very, very scary destroyer, even if it's not charging you down with torpedoes at close range. Meanwhile, the Montana. I can't really be too critical about what the Montana's doing here. He's not actually charging in and attacking when they have a 400 point lead. And, okay, one, almost two of the three caps. But with the amount of time remaining, I mean, there's still nine minutes of this battle left. There's no way the Montana's going to be able to run away and hide and survive and just let the clock run down and win on points. It, it's not even remotely possible. And to the Montana's credit, he's smart enough to know that. And so he knows he has to fight and he knows the odds are against him. But he at least has the luxury of picking the hill that he's going to die on. And the enemy team know they have to focus him down as well, because they're 400 points behind with just two enemies. And they only have one of the cap circles. So the Montana is picking the corner of that island, which is probably the best spot that he could go for under the circumstances, because he's still probably going to suffer against the Venezia semi-armor piercing, but he can angle against the Ohio and the Preussen, and he can use the island to at least give him some cover, and just dig in there and try to stay alive for as long as he possibly can, and do the maximum amount of damage that he possibly can. But it's going to be a really close run thing. Fortunately, it looks like his heel has just come off cooldown. So he's managed to buy himself a little bit more time. And a little bit of time is all that Kung Fu Barbie needs. He's got the torpedoes away against the Preussen. And it's a nice wide spread covering all of the bases. And the Preussen sees them coming and starts desperately manoeuvring to get out of the way. And it's probably going to take four of them to get him. And there's one. There's two. There's three. Oh, is the fourth one going? Yes, it is. <laughs> and the Montana's still alive. And again, to his credit, he's actually reading the situation slightly better than I was at this point because, well, we can see the Ohio, but where did the Venezia go? The Venezia is rushing in with his high-speed smoke in order to get a torpedo attack off. And the Montana's realized this, and he didn't want to be just sitting around the corner of an island waiting for the Venezia to appear at zero range and finish him off with torpedoes. So he started backing away to give him a little bit of room to maneuver. And sure enough, here comes the Venezia. However... It's not the Venezia's torpedoes, it's the combination of, well, semi-armor piercing spam from the Venezia, but the Montana does get a strike in on him and shaves off a little bit more of his health, plus the armor piercing, or possibly high explosive from the Ohio, as well as the high explosive from the Ohio secondaries that set the fires that finish him off. And now the Ohio is flipping Bravo completely uncontested and is going to take it. He's on the far side of the island, although he's starting to slip out. There goes the cap circle. What's the Venezia up to? Is he going to flip Alpha? He probably should, because they're chasing a destroyer. Neither of them have radar. And that would be the smart move. It would be unwise to count on that Venezia and Ohio to do something stupid, because they've both played pretty well thus far. So, Kung Fu Barbie, what are you going to do? You do still have the points. I mean, you're nearly 400 points ahead. But there's plenty of time left for them to change that situation. You only have the one cap circle. The Venezia is going for it. He's going for Alpha. Bravo is too close to those enemy ships in order to safely take it. He's waiting to see what his torpedoes are going to do. This might be good, actually. I think he's going to get at least one hit. Maybe on both of them. No, maybe. He might get the Venezia with one of them. He's definitely going to get the Ohio. No, the Venezia manages to dodge. And the Ohio takes two. Better than nothing. What tends to happen now is they're going to be looking in the direction the torpedoes came from. But that's no longer where Kung Fu Barbie is. Although he's about to advertise his position to them. By slipping into Alpha which he does need to do, because he's only got a 300 point lead now, and there's still five minutes of this game left, and if they take two of those three cap circles, they will win on points. He could of course seal the deal by killing one of them, 
but they're a bit close. And it's way safer just to flip Alpha and buy you some more time. Because at the moment he's got no points coming in. And they're really starting to close the gap with two of the caps. Of course, now they know exactly where he is. And he can see the Venezia flipping Alpha down there. But he can't see the Ohio. And that's kind of worrying. I mean, the RPF indicator is giving him an idea of where the Ohio is. It's pointing towards the closest enemy ship, which is clearly not the Venezia. He pops the smoke, buys himself a little more time by slightly resetting the Venezia's capture progress. And now he's got the island in the way, or he will have in a second. There it is. He's able to get some more shots off and hopefully reset the capture progress further. The Venezia sees him though and very, very nearly delivers some seriously bad news. But he has now flipped Alpha. So he has some points coming in. And he knows in which direction the Ohio is, but he doesn't know how far away he is. And then the Ohio launches his spotter plane, which probably means he's coming around the right-hand side of the island there. And the Venezia had stopped flipping Alpha. It looks like he was thinking, I need to go after that destroyer in order to win. But then he changes his mind and he starts flipping Alpha again. Although he could be doing it on the way up here, but given his position on the map, it's unlikely. And there's the Ohio. This is a very dangerous game the Ohio's playing here, of course, because he's a battleship hunting a destroyer, so he's always going to get spotted first and, well, you know, torpedoes. But dangerous or not, the Ohio doesn't really have a choice. Somebody has to get into this cap circle at Charlie and contest it to stop Kung Fu Bobby from accumulating points, because if nobody does it, he's going to reach a thousand points before the match ends and he's going to win. So the Ohio straps his man pants on. And he's manoeuvring pretty well, actually. He probably realised that he was about to catch a face full of torpedoes when he came around the side of the island. So he came in as wide as he possibly could. He took one, which under the circumstances I think was probably the best he could hope for. It did cause a flood. He has used his damage control. But to the Ohio's credit, he's done it. He's in the cap circle. He's contesting it. Kung Fu Barbie no longer has a reliable source of points coming in. The Ohio's team have two of the three caps. There's three minutes of this game left. And with a 200 point lead, I think that's all they need. Kung Fu Barbie now must sink that Ohio in order to win. And you can bet your life the Venezia is on his way here as fast as he possibly can. There's 44 seconds remaining on his torpedo reload. He's going to have to do this with his guns. The only good news here is that he knows the Ohio has just used his damage control. So that fire is going to keep burning. But the Ohio's perfectly capable of doing a lot of damage to a destroyer, even without its main battery guns. The secondaries are really nasty. He set a return fire on Kung Fu Bobby. He's had to burn his damage control. The Venezia is closing in as well, and I believe is now inside shooting range. He can't afford to wait for the torpedoes. I mean, the Ohio knows where he is. He knows which direction the torpedoes are going to be coming from, and he's already shown that he knows how to dodge them. So guns it is. Oh, he's lost a turret. <laughs> but the fire is still burning. <laughs> so close. There's the smoke. He's going to rely on the shots in the air, and the fact that the Ohio has already fired and will remain visible to claim that final kill. But he is on fire. There goes the damage control. Came off cooldown at the last possible second. And now Kung Fu Bobby needs to get the hell out of there. He destroyed the Ohio. The Ohio is no longer flipping Charlie. The Venezia is not in Charlie. He's popping torpedoes around the side of the island just in case. But he's not taking any chances. He's motoring the hell out of there because to die to the Venezia with two points to go... <laughs> before reaching a thousand and winning the match would be really embarrassing. Nothing to be ashamed of there, of course. I mean, that was not just textbook destroyer play, it was also textbook teamwork. Just about every move that he made, certainly in the last 15 minutes of that battle, was done to support teammates. And I'm not just talking about smoking up the Preussen, even though that ended up being in vain. Although, through no fault of Kung Fu Barbie, but the way that he covered and protected 
the Montana. And the Montana, of course, did an exceptionally good job under extremely difficult circumstances as well. And the enemy team, with the exception of the Mosso at the beginning, didn't really do anything wrong. And in fact, in some cases, the Ohio in particular, played exceptionally well. In fact, I don't think too many people would disagree that the majority of the boneheaded decisions made during the course of this battle were from members of Kung Fu Bobby's team, the Des Moines, who gave broadside to the entire enemy team at the beginning because he was focusing down a Marceau and not doing too well at that. The Yoshino, who decided that he needed to start winning harder when he only had 6,000 health left. And it's refreshing to see a battle between, you know, decently skilled players where the result isn't decided by which side makes the most mistakes, but instead is decided by which side just plays better. I realise they sound like the same thing, but there is a very subtle difference. And finally, before I forget, because this is pretty remarkable... Special congratulations to Kung Fu Barbie, not just for an exceptionally well-played game, but for the sheer amount of damage that he did. Nearly 300,000. 280,000 damage. In a match where there were only six ships on the enemy team. That, if nothing else, shows just exactly how much heavy lifting he was doing during the course of this match. So I hope you can all agree, that was an extremely well-played battle. Congratulations to Kung Fu Barbie on... An exceptionally well-deserved win, which he really had to fight for right from the beginning. And I hope you all enjoyed it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.